Hello, I'm Super Orange Cat here, and today with Tanami's ratings from this past Saturday, July 16th, 2022. Let's start at the top of the block. At the top of the block, we have Primal at a .10, Loop on the third at a .09, One Piece at a .06, followed by an episode at .07, followed by an episode at .06, Naruto at a .06, followed by an episode at .05. Shenmue at a point zero four and Attack on Titan at a point zero three. Ultimately, this was a bit of a letdown, especially at the very top of the block. Outside of the top of the block, the ratings week to week were roughly the same, actually down a teeny bit, but only a teeny bit. Primal dropped five hundred at point one zero, and again, we've been talking about Primal's ratings have started to yo-yo around a little bit. Towards the very start of its run here on Tanami, it was getting point one seven, point one eight. It was getting those really good numbers. We haven't seen lead off Tanami since we had Family Guy on right before Tanami, you know? And it was definitely outrating the Tanami originals. Like it was doing better than Feno was doing. It was doing better than Shenmue was doing. It was definitely doing better than Blade Runner Black Lotus. Which out of the three Tanami originals of that little block, definitely looking like to be the black sheep of the family. But again, and this is not a good number. And the thing is, and it's weird, when you have these days where Primal is bad, retention actually is relatively good. Because Lupin retained 90% of the audience this week compared to like 60-something percent of last week. So it actually relatively looks good right now, which comes to show that I think that's Primal. It's going to depend on whether people's TVs are still on, if people have any general interest in that specific episode relative to the rest of the block where I think we found a rough core of like a .09 audience, especially for Loop on the Third, that just slowly drains throughout the night. I think that's the core Tsunami audience that's just not going to leave. Which means it's scary because that means we're barely doing better than that bare minimum right now. And it all starts at the top of the block. And yet again, Primal we know for sure will still be the show at the top of the block, for the indefinite future because of season two reruns being put at the start of the block. Like particular, next week's schedule, next week we get let off with two episodes of Primal because season two will debut on Thursday night and the reruns of those first two episodes of the season will air at midnight and 12.30 this upcoming Saturday the 23rd. And everything shifts down one spot for that week. And also, this after that week, the week after the 30th, that second slot of Primal gets turned into Yashihime. So that's something to look forward to, too. We do have a new show coming in in two weeks. It's Yashihime Season 2. Probably the least surprising new show to get this year. And, yeah. And outside of that, not too much new going on. But on the block is... Roughly going to just still be the same, week after week. And other than that, not much news. The other, there's a little bit of news to add. I saw a few days ago a video on Twitter of the man, I forgot his name, who is going to be the director of Fooly Cooly Shoegaze. Now, Fooly Cooly Shoegaze is one of the two new Fooly Cooly sequels we'll get sometime next year. It's the one we don't really know anything about. We know about... Fully Cooly uh, Grunge, that's when we got that little blurb trailer of Haruko with the sword. And we've gotten a bit more promo art for that than for Fully Cooly Shoegaze. And the director of Fully Cooly Shoegaze is the same guy who directed Fully Cooly Alternative, which generally speaking was the Fully Cooly sequel that had a bit of a better reception, better than Fully Cooly Progressive. And what he said was that in many aspects, this is going to be kind of a sequel to Alternative. Ten years in the future from the end of Fully Cooly Alternative, the events of that. And he emphasized Kana is not going to show up. So Kana, the main character of Alternative, she's gone. Gone. We're not going to see her. And it's going to be a completely new plot. And he talked about it's going to be about a coming-of-age story. But this time, which I thought was interesting because the original Fully Cooly, you can roughly state, was the coming-of-age story of a boy. The two sequels, you could say, were the coming-of-age story of girls, of one separate girl in each one. This one, he said, it's going to be the coming-of-age of a boy and girl together, which is interesting, I guess. And at the same time, it'll be interesting to see how they play on that. Haruko, of course, is going to get involved. She's going to get in those kids' businesses. She's probably going to pull down some pants because that's just what she does. But other than that, pretty interesting. 
it could have definitely gone in a dumber direction. Like, it looks like how they're framing Fully Cooly Grunge, it's going to be some weird anthology thing where Haruko just roams around Neo Tokyo with a katana or something, which honestly doesn't separate that from Blade Runner Black Lotus at this point. Ah, but Blade Runner Black Lotus takes place in LA. I know, but a Japanese aesthetic. Whatever. But what do you guys think about these ratings? Which shows you like to see on the block? I'm Super Orange Cat, and that is all.